Welcome back to another Save It For Parts tech review. I've done a few of these review videos where companies will send me a gadget or product to check out and see what I think about it. This one is a little bit different because this is more of a DIY product. Elecro has sent me an ESP32 terminal, so this is a microcontroller based little gadget or computer on a chip. This is a device that's been on my to-do list to investigate for a while, but I just haven't gotten around to trying it out. So this is a great excuse to learn how microcontrollers and especially ESP32 works. And this crow tail is just an easier method of connecting uh, GPIO pins like I've been using on my Raspberry Pi. But instead of just having to do individual wires, you've got a built-in little socket here. So our main unit here is the ESP32 terminal. And this takes the little ESP32 system on a chip and basically puts it into a little handheld device. So it's got a little screen, it's actually got a little camera built in, and then it has all the breakouts for the crow tail ports, some interface buttons and whatnot. So this should hopefully make getting started with ESP a lot easier than just getting a bare chip. At least I'm hoping so, because my electronics knowledge is pretty basic. I'm not very good at soldering. I know almost nothing about microcontrollers, so a little package like this where everything's partly assembled and ready to experiment with sounds like a really good idea. So Elcro also included this nifty little package of accessories here, and this is some stuff to get me started with my ESP32 experiments. We've got a very cool laser cut 3D logo. In addition to selling electronics products like the ESP32 here, Elcro does services as well. So they do acrylic laser cutting like this if you have a custom file. They'll do 3D printing if you don't have your own 3D printer and want something created. And they also do PCB customization, so if you want to fabricate your own board, they can do that for you. We've got a Elcro pen. We also have a very nice little notebook here. And yeah, this looks like pretty good quality. So this is going to be great for documenting my ESP32 experiments, writing down project ideas, taking general notes. And then we've got a few stickers to stick on our final project or on my camera case or wherever. So right out of the box, this looks like a great little starter set to get me going. Again, this is a sponsored video. Elecro sent me all this stuff for free to check out to see how I like it. But this isn't just some generic imported product that gets sent over from Amazon. This is actually some DIY stuff, which is right up the alley of my channel. I've done Raspberry Pi stuff before. I've done other electronic stuff. But again, I have not played around with a microcontroller like this. So I'm really excited to get into this. I was actually so interested in this project that I went and bought some more accessories on my own. And again, these came with a fun little accessory. We've got this uh, Crowbot sticker. So... That's pretty cool. That's going to go on one of my project boxes. I've got another little LED module here. I grabbed another of the RGB modules, and then I got a little collision sensor. So this little handheld terminal combines an ESP32 chip with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's got a bunch of ports, digital, analog, UART. It has a 320 by 480 screen built in, along with a little 2 megapixel camera. And the whole thing is built into this little acrylic shell. Apparently you can program this with Python, MicroPython, or Arduino code, which I have yet to learn. And it also supports some stuff called ESPIDF and LVGL, which I don't know what those mean yet. I'll have to look that up. You can power it with USB-C or with a LiPo battery. And this is kind of intended as an all-in-one little terminal that you can use for things like home automation or 3D printing, robotics, electronics experiments, all kinds of applications for something like this. Now the chip itself is about 240 megahertz CPU with 16 megs of flash and 8 megs of PS RAM. That's a lot better specs than some of the computers I started using when I was a kid. The screen does have capacitive touch, it does have an SD card slot built in, and it even has a little microphone so you can do voice control stuff with it. Now this didn't come with a manual of any sort because again it's a device for DIY projects. Elecro's website has all kinds of ideas and project guides and how to's and videos and all sorts of resources for things that you can do with this little device. And all of the data sheets are on here if you want to get in the guts of how ESP32 works or the capacitive touchscreen or any of the other components that go into this gadget. This is probably far more information than I'll need, at least at my level of electronics knowledge. Usually on the Save It For Parts channel, I'm repurposing consumer level products that were never intended for whatever the heck I'm doing with them. So it's refreshing to come across an actual product designed for DIY with all the specs out there for the user to do anything they want. Stuff like this is really cool for the DIY and maker communities. This thing fires right up and it seems to have kind of a demo mode on it. The little touchscreen works just fine. Fast response. It booted up basically instantly. Scrolling works fine. 
This is really cool. You can actually change the color. You can see how the click boxes work. You can see animations working. And the graphics quality on this looks really nice. We've even got a little on-screen keyboard demo here where we can type things in. I'm just going through the links that Elecro sent me, starting with Lesson 1, setting up the Arduino environment. This version of Arduino IDE doesn't look quite like the one in the instructions, but I think I've still figured it out. It looks like the next step is to get this CH340G driver, which is some kind of USB to serial driver. It doesn't say where to find that, so I'll just have to search on Google and see if I can turn something up. Okay, I talked to Elecro and they sent me some more files to play with and suggested that I use Arduino 1.8 for the best compatibility. So I'm going to install that and try to follow along through some of these lessons again. They also gave me all the details to put in for this specific board. This is a lot more complicated than I'm used to. I don't know what half of this stuff is. So it's kind of nice of Elecro to help walk me through this. And I apparently do need some extra hand holding because the device itself is not giving me the same outputs that I'm supposed to be seeing according to the tutorial. So it says if I click the boot button and then the reset button that it will tell me waiting for download. But I've tried about every combination of those two buttons and all I'm really getting is this setup done message. I'm also still trying to figure out how to include all these libraries and whatnot. Elcro sent me a bunch of libraries in an RAR file and it looks like Arduino wants a zip file, so I'm not sure if I can use the RIR as it is or if I have to unzip stuff and then rezip it. None of the tutorials quite 100% match what I'm seeing in real life, which makes it a little difficult for me as a complete ESP32 noob. I'm having a lot of trouble following along with this stuff. So let's go ahead and just open one of these lessons that they sent me versus using the one from the website. I got so used to Python and interpreted languages that I forgot what it's like to wait for a compiler to run. And now we've had a serial port error, so I'm going to have to look into this a little deeper. So I actually just noticed something with this as I try to mess around with the serial port monitor. If I move my hand around the capacitive touch screen here, it not only interfaces with the device, but I'm also getting information coming across the serial port. I don't know what to do with this right now, but apparently I could use this device as an external touch screen on my computer with the right software. Okay, I'm going to try again to upload a new sketch to this device. Now, I found some information online that said if I hold down the boot button while pushing the reset button, that will put the device into a mode where I can update new firmware. Now, my fingers are pretty big, so I can't actually push both of those buttons at once. I'm going to have to use a pen or something. Okay, now we have that waiting for download message that the tutorial talks about. Elecro sent me one of these LED modules, and on their website, the LED module comes with a schematic, a wiki link, and just a very simple Arduino program sketch. And there we go, an incredibly basic program that just turns on that LED. It doesn't even make it blink or anything. Well, I have to say, these little crowtail modules are much easier than trying to solder or stick wires together. And look at that, we've got an LED to turn on. I know this is incredibly, incredibly basic, but this is the absolute first thing I've ever done with an ESP32. So I'm back on the Elecro website and looking through the wiki on this terminal, and we've got a couple more example programs that I haven't seen before. So I'm gonna try this code and see if we can upgrade from a constant LED to a blinking LED. All right, we got that sucker to blink, so I'm finally making some progress. How about something more complicated? They also sent me one of these little RGB multiple light modules. And there's a wiki entry and some code for this. Now this code requires the Adafruit NeoPixel library. So we've gone into the library manager and we've found that. Now it looks like these little guys can be daisy chained. So we want to make sure to hook up to the input pins. All right, we're connected, we're uploaded. Let's find that reset button. It's one of these back here. Hey, there we go. The LED chase mode is working. That's pretty cool. Again, very basic, but that's pretty cool. One thing I'm still not clear about is which pins correspond to which connectors back here. Uh, a lot of these programs start with pin 1 or pin 5. The only one I've been able to figure out so far, pin 40, it corresponds to this D2 over here. Let's try a more complex example from the Elecro wiki. Unfortunately, all the comments on this code are in Chinese, so I'm not 100% sure how it works, but supposedly this will display images on the LCD screen. Again, I'm finding this Arduino library thing a little clunky, trying to find all these random include files just out there on the internet, because 
they're not really included with some of the example files and it's not really clear where to get them. And I know it's not directly related to Elecro, but this whole Arduino IDE thing is just incredibly slow. It takes forever for anything to pop up, to search anything, and this is not a super old computer. Um, I guess I'm just really spoiled by Python just working and working quickly. Well, I got the screen to turn on, although I haven't gotten it to display an image yet. I'm realizing that I don't have the patience or tension span for compiled languages anymore. Fortunately, this little ESP32 terminal can supposedly also run Python. So now we're trying this Thawney IDE with MicroPython. I keep forgetting I have to hold down these two buttons with two pens because my fingers don't fit in there. Okay, we had to find a ESP32S3 binary file. Now we've just got more mysterious errors and everything is slowed way, way down waiting for the device to respond. It's like it wants to be connected, but it doesn't know what it's getting when it's actually connected to the terminal. All right, I'm going to wrap up the video and set this guy aside for now. I've gotten some of the very basics of ESP32. I've gotten it to do some of the introductory stuff, and it looks like a really cool little terminal that I'm looking forward to learning more about. Unfortunately, right now, I don't really know where to start with anything more complicated than blinking an LED, and it's taken me about two weeks to get to that point, so I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. I'm going to move on to some other projects, but we're going to keep this guy around. I'm going to think about some other projects I can do with it. Maybe if I get really good at programming, I can do something more fun with it, like controlling some of my satellite dishes or radio equipment, or even use the little screen and camera on here. Thank you again to Elecro for sending me this device, for sending me all the cool accessories, and for helping me along, holding my hand a little bit when I didn't understand what I was doing. I think their tutorials and their wiki could be a little simpler. For somebody like me, I need a lot of very basic step-by-step -step instructions to get started on this, and I need a little more hand-holding with unfamiliar technology, unfamiliar programming languages. So something like this might not be for the very, very basic beginner like myself, but it has a lot of cool features and a lot of promise for someone who knows what they're doing with ESP32, knows what they're doing with Arduino, and can take advantage of all the features on it. Hopefully this has been an interesting review for folks and hasn't been too annoying watching me struggle with code. Stay tuned to see if we do any follow-ups on this. It might not be right away, but I will think about ideas for this thing in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.